what's going on guys welcome back to clash with eric and happy halloween guys we're almost at halloween and we have the clash masters open qualifier number three well, even though the top of the screen it says number one but we have qsfn versus carnage currently ny amazing qsfn and space station have secured their spot into the finals and carnage still needs to get their spots so we'll see if they can get it done here but without wasting any time, we're kicking right into the action. So if you guys are new here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to use code Eric if you're having some fun this stream. And we'll put my head down here and see if we can uh, have a good match here between the teams. As he starts off with a, looks like a clone Hydra attack here. Whenever we see that town hall with a single Inferno next to it, the clone Hydra is... Uh, Decent option here, as long as you're not going to fight the sweepers too badly. There's a sweeper down at the bottom of the base there, and he will have to continue to fight it. The king and the queen. Um, I don't know where the king went, but the queen is working along the left side of the base there, and she's staying safe. And now the king deploys. He wasn't even deployed yet. Now he comes down with a funnel at the bottom of the base to push him into the eagle artillery, where he'll be able to join with the queen. The yak will be able to break open the wall, and they will be able to go into the eagle artillery compartment together and get some big value down there. Dragon Riders. Working the way towards that air defense over on the right side as they get hit by the Town Hall Poison and Eagle Artillery Strike. But the World Champion is pushing their way through. Now, the biggest thing here is he got all the enemy heroes out of the way so that when his World Champion pushes through, even without the Dragons and Dragon Riders still doing anything significant here other than clean up, the World Champion has a really solid chance of pushing her way through. The rest of the spell support is aimed at her, and he does get the... Eagle Artillery down there with his King and the Queen. They still have a lot of HP. The World Champion steps in. We'll pick off that Expo. And it looks like we're going to be open up with a triple here for QSFN. They already secured their spot for the finals, guys. They already secured their spot for the playoffs. They will move on to the next round of the tournament and continue to play for the $20,000. But Carnage is still in contention. Fabian is live with a... Mecha Smash. Got ourselves... A Warden Walkable Scattershot in the bottom compartment here. We'll see if it's trapped up here to stop this Warden Walk, but it's a symmetrical base for the most part. So we could have made an entry into the bottom or the top compartment with the Warden Walk. Chose the bottom. We'll see if there's any traps here to stop it. But the Warden will get raged up, but a Baby Dragon will clear some of the trash along the bottom side to help the Warden push more directly into the Scattershot. Now, the enemy Queen right there could cause some potential problems. And we'll see if that enemy queen draws any of the P.E.K.K.A.s out. He probably wants to bail off before he engages the queen there with the warden. He could try to take her down if he wanted to invest the spells into it. But uh, he definitely needs to get this air defense out of the way as he rounds into this left-hand compartment. So this air defense is right in a very inopportune spot, which can threaten the healers. So he has to be very, very careful. He didn't deploy all the healers initially, but he will start his way into the base now. The healers will start to take damage, and he starts to hit a couple of balloons. He'll freeze up that air defense. That had to have been a planned freeze there because there's no way that he was going to be able to get the air defense there on the initial entry. But he'll rage up the balloons and he catches the healers out in front there. And he will make his way through and get that air defense down. And now the healers are in a better position now. They're transferring forward to the P.E.K.K.A.s. P.E.K.K.A.s are beating through the wall or are they? No, they're going to the wrong wall. The P.E.K.K.A.s have gone north. The king never wall broke into that top compartment. But the king is wall breaking into the Scattershot compartment up north while the Road Champion... Clears out their stuff with the P.E.K.K.A.s, and the P.E.K.K.A.s are driven back to the middle of the base. There's a one wall open that they can step in after the Tesla. Now they're going to have to go through another wall, and then two more potentially to get to the Town Hall. So a long push to go here. But the jump will come down. The jump is not connecting him to the Town Hall compartment. A lot of the P.E.K.K.A.s have walked on him. He needs to get the Smolten Inferno down. Now the P.E.K.K.A. that stepped in there and will take it out. Echo will clear out the rest of the middle of the base where the Road Champion makes her way towards the Town Hall. We'll rage up the Town Hall and uh, make sure this Road Champion has a lot of punch going into it. She already used her ability, but uh, at this point, the Queen needs to take the Town Hall. She still has her ability. He's got the Yetis down at the bottom there working on getting through that wall to leave to the outside of the base. But the Queen, she has her Unicorn with her. He'll freeze up the Town Hall. He can pop his Queen ability. Drops it a balloon up top. As soon as that balloon clears that mortar up there, he can start to clean him up there. He's got 30 seconds to wrap around. The Yetis and the last remaining P.E.K.K.A. are holding that last healer, and they're making a strong push across the base here. The Queen gets caught in the Toyota Trap, which is actually delaying her from going into the Town Hall Poison, which actually is helping right now. The Wizard up top is doing some work here. Looks like he's still got a lot of punch here. He's only got a little bit of time, but a little bit of time is all he needs, because 
Scrubbian will get the first triple on the board here for Carnage Gaming, and we're starting off tied. It was grinding at the end there, but he barely makes it through. Katano is live with a Blizzard Lalo. Going after the Town Hall first, a couple of Rocket Balloons come down to pick off the air defense and clear the way of Black Mines. The Blimp will reach the Town Hall compartment with no Tornado Trap in sight yet. A couple of Goblins come out ahead of the Super Wizards to go after the traps by the Town Hall and ensure that there's no traps that are going to kill the Super Wizards. They'll take the Town Hall down, they'll turn back around, they'll get the chains off of the Expo and take out most of the CC. Do they get the rest of the CC? Yes, they do! They destroy the CC and kill all the troops that came out of it as well. That's going to free up his poison. That means he can use that poison for something else. Good value out of that blizzard there. Took out a nice section of the base and uh, got the CC dealt with. The uh, CC being dealt with is going to save him a lot of time and save him a lot of headache here for his heroes as they punch him. But a couple of skeletal spells will come down up ahead of the king and the queen there to give him a little bit of tanking as they continue to push their way through. And ice golem for the queen. The queen does get locked onto by the expo, but that's not too much that she can't handle. She has her unicorn. And that's the advantage if you can get a little bit of damage on the queen, but not too much, then she can do a lot of work there. And then after everything else uh, takes out that expo, she'll have a chance to get top back off by her unicorn and continue to pick up some big value. The queen has a wall break down at the bottom of the base there where she can follow that ice golem and go in after the multi-inferno. Her ability stays strong. She gets the enemy queen down with the Aurora champion moving to the middle. She's going to pop her ability and she's actually going to get that multi out in the middle. Huge value as it was already weakened up there by the blizzard going all the way through and picking up the expo in the middle of the base there as well. This is, uh, this is insane. This is absolutely insane how much value he got out of the heroes and the blizzard. There's almost no base left. The queen survived. No, she doesn't. I lied. I lied to you. I'm not even sorry about it. I'm not even sorry about it. This time, normally I am. But he does push his way into the sky to shot there, into the eagle artillery. Got a lot of balloons, but this wizard tower is doing some work to him. We got the haste there. He can surge his way forward, but this wizard tower is doing a lot of work to him. Now another big clump of balloons there is going to the Wizard Tower as well. One splits off to the Inferno. Time is going to be an issue now, maybe. Losing a lot of balloons here. The single Inferno will take out that Inferno, or take out that uh, balloon that went up by it. But the Warden is going to step in up in front. Electric Owl gets targeted. The Warden Electric Owl will work on the Inferno. The balloons will continue north from there to go to the Archer Tower. Does he have the time to clean it up here? He's got pups and minions across the bottom. Loses some cleanup in the middle. Pops a whole bunch of air skillies. Uses his poison finally to take out the air skillies. As the top defense is clear to Archer and a minion. He continue to work up there. But the balloons go into the middle. They're going out to the storage. Does he have to take out the storage at time? The warden turns north. That is a huge, huge break right there. As the warden breaks north and picks off the buildings up there. Now he can search his way south. He's into the last couple storages. But I don't think he has the time. I think it's a defense, a time fail for QSFN at 98%. Woo. Hugo Stiglitz coming up for the next one. We got to sell, say, Queen Charge Mass Hogs as he starts in with a blimp taking out the Inferno with the bottom of the base there. Can he get the bomb tower? He does. He got the bomb tower out of it. That's good value, especially in a hog attack. But he got the bomb tower, he got the inferno, and he got the CC pull. All good things here. Looks like he's punching his queen. Aiming her to go down here, not towards the town hall. If he... Wait, maybe he does go to the town hall. Honestly, I'm not sure. Oh, nice wall break. Alright, well, uh, maybe not the... <laughs> Whatever. He's got into the base there. He'll freeze up the town hall and the inferno while he continues to beat down these ground skellies. Bill has a strong push here going, guys. The single Inferno relocks onto the Queen. He will need to freeze it again. Freeze up the Expo with it. Good value to the freeze here. Will get the Queen to go south. Go south, please. Nope, she goes north into Town Hall Poison. He drops the King, trying to force her back towards the south there. Has to freeze up the Expo again as she's taking a lot of damage here. She's outrageous. Honestly, let her go and go for the healer transfer instead. I feel like that would be the best option here. He keeps on freezing, but I feel like he should just let his queen die and he should uh, just go for the healer transfers and the hogs in from the bottom. King takes the healers. Now you need to send the hogs in from the top. <laughs> All right, wall breaks the king. The king continues on for a little bit longer with his ability, but the healers can't catch him. Send the hogs in the top. Save the hog. Or save the healers. Save the healers. Save the raid. Come on. Healers are dying, taking eagle strikes. What is he doing here? 
Oh no. My cloak of uh, invisibility has been revealed. My shoulder showed for a second. <laughs> uh, Hogs is starting the way in though. He's got the RC working with him with a lot of enemy heroes still standing. That king is weakened on the bottom of the base there. The headers will go after him under the ward ability. Start his way across. Eagle artillery will be absorbed by the warden ability. But there's his last spell. The heal in the middle of the base there. He finds the tornado trap. Stall him up for a little bit there. But he should be able to get that multi down quickly. And hopefully get this eagle artillery off of him. But the scatter shot firing away on the backside here. With the enemy world champion standing on the backside. This looks like it's going to be a defense. That means that the 98% there from Carnage is going to put them into the lead here through the second attacks. And that's a big, big miss here for Hugo Stiglitz. He is going to have nobody get through this Scattershot and this Royal Champion on the backside. Too much damage. I don't, I don't fully understand the plan here. He hesitated a lot there. Maybe if the extra healing from the healers was able to be preserved, he could have made it through with the Hogs if he didn't delay and hesitate there for so long. He might have been able to pull that through, but with this... It ain't going to happen. 78% will be the final. And QSFN is in the lead. Okay. Here we go. Giovanni. Coming in with a zap Lalo. Looks like he's going to zap out the Inferno by the Town Hall. Make sure there's no damage right behind us. So the Queen can go in there and connect to the Lightning that was used. Leaving out the Multi-Inferno in the middle of the base there is an interesting choice. Unless he can reach it with the, uh, with the heroes. He brought a double poison here, so he can deal with the headhunter separately from the hound, and he can also deal with whatever kind of CC comes out of there. With the double poison, he has a lot of versatility in any kind of CC that comes out on defense, but the king is going to go in with the ice golem. The royal champion very likely going to go with the king, and they will go in there and fight the CC with the double poison. If it's a headhunter with uh, rocket balloons, that is ideal here. And we see archers. We see archers. Queen takes it down hall. We see lots of archers and we see the super minions. So the double poison is going to rip that up and he's going to have no problem working his way through the CC. Getting maximum value out of his king. His king. Wait, I already said king. The king, the road champion, and his queen will survive and continue on to the south side of the base. Here. He makes the road champion invisible so she gets that multi inferno down. And I was questioning whether that was the right call to leave that multi-inferno up as a zap choice, but that did free up the Road Champion to go all the way in there and clear that entire core of the base. So big value out of that. But he Lalo's in through the Scattershot. The Queen's still alive over on the left side. She burned her ability, but she's going to get some big value out of cleanup here. The Slammer goes in after the Eagle Artillery and will use the Ward ability to push his way through the multi-inferno. As soon as the Ward ability wears off, he immediately replaces it with a freeze and locks that up, but he doesn't get the Eagle Artillery down as the Slammer takes some weird pathing and starts to shoot through to the middle of the base there. And it'll go back, but it's gonna take it a moment. He's got plenty of time at this point. He pops in a couple archers up on the top side as he sees a little bit of an opening. The Queen will go finish off the CC. It looks like he's got it under control, guys. This is completely crushed. QSFN already qualified for the playoffs. To move on to play for the biggest chunk of that $20,000 prize pool. But at this point, they're maintaining the lead very, very strongly here. And they've made some big wins here across the bracket. Taking out Space Station Gaming in the round before. And a, and a pretty solid match there as well. But uh, they're up. So we'll see what Connors can do. Ketoan is live. Coming in with a sneaky Bat Rider attack. We'll sneak goblins, clearing out all the collectors and storages around the town hall compartment. Just weigh in with the sneak goblins to uh, go clear that last storage inside, the last remaining obstacle for the sneak goblins to reach the town hall. And here we go, trigger all the traps. Got most of them. And then one more just in case. Also got the tornado out of the way, wait for it to fade, and then send in the rest of the sneak goblins. He needs to get the invisibility to cover the. Oh! Okay, okay. <laughs> he had to burn an extra invisibility. Luckily, he had one. But he is able to drop in a second invisibility and get the town hall down. A scary moment right there for Titoan. But he will maintain this attack under control here. He's just down one spell. And we'll see if that costs him at the end. That is one spell that his world champion probably would have liked to have as she gets ready to come in as the... 
big kill squad comes in the bottom side. The road champion now starting. Now with a lot less support, but luckily no Tessa farm popping on the road champion. So she still will go all the way in and she'll get that scatter shot down. The CC is pulled. The headhunters end up dying to the log launcher as it strikes them as it pushes through. But that uh, multi inferno in the middle stays standing. We'll need something to go pick it up. The queen has uh, left the base. Queen is off doing whatever it is the queens do. Not going for the multi inferno in the middle. That's for darn sure. As it sits by at one HP, we're gonna be back to the wall. She's actually gonna go through and she'll probably pick up that. Wizard Tower, which will definitely be helpful. Let's get that multi down, though. Needs to be patient here. Needs to wait for the Dragon Riders to take out the... Oh, the Yetis are going back. Look at the... <laughs> the Warden takes a pop shot at that last shot on the Inferno and takes it down. He's down to... Two splash damages left on the base. He'll freeze up as the bats start their way in. They'll build up onto the mortar there, dump their way into the wizard tower, and the freeze will get him through. He's got two more freezes, and he's got ground expos on the base here. The king is alive. Minions are around doing cleanup here. Just needs one more freeze for that wizard tower, and he's got the bats all the way to the base. He can drop in one more to protect them as they go in through the arch tower Tesla, but now he pops it early there. And he's gonna get it either way. The queen is alive. She still has her ability. The king is alive. Minions are pops everywhere. The electric owl is working with the bats. The bats go down. I think he still has it though. The electric owl tanks the archer tower up top. I think must something must have pulled a red bomb there in the mix around the bats there and got him killed. But it is a triple either way. Carnage is still in this, ladies and gentlemen. They need a defense though. Loop Zera is live with a Sui Lalo as a couple of skeletal spells and a couple of poisons. We've seen the double poison be effective in the previous attacks. See if uh, Loop Zero can get in here and properly, properly deal with the CC. The King will start it off. He'll funnel out the other side as he gets ready for the Queen to go in after the Town Hall, potentially. The CC is right behind the Town Hall, but the Queen can reach it before pulling the CC. King will stay away from the CC range though as he punches in and get that enemy Roar Champion out of the way here. He's going to get the scatter shot while the Roar Champion comes in the top side. He does have the enemy King right there as he makes his approach to the other scatter shot blocking the way. So he needs to be really careful with that. But his RC will pop her ability, clear most of everything on the top end of the base there and uh, lock onto the enemy King. His last he provided a little bit of tanking. Does he go invisible there? Kind of focus over on to the Town Hall takedown. He does get the Town Hall down with the Queen. Gets a full CC pull. Drops in one balloon up top, and that'll go to the scatter shot. The slammer will start in the scatter shot. There's still a multi inferno in the middle of the base there. I don't know what kind of path the slammer is going to take here, but if it goes to the battle builder and then the multi inferno, that'd be some an enormous value here if it can survive that long. It's also anchoring the CC down while he poisons it up, and so we can get that down as well. Well, Rocket Blue's getting drawn into the, the, the poison, or the skeletal spells, I mean. I see he takes that enemy queen out of the way. Vicky seems to have got that enemy queen down. I don't see her health bar anywhere, so looks like she is gone. Multi Inferno, still a little bit of an issue up on the top end of the base there, but he does have a couple balloons going off that direction. He'll freeze it up there. Watch for red air bombs in that area. I don't see any going off, so we might be able to get that Multi Inferno. Nope, not quite, not quite, but he did clear most of the defenses out in front of it. Lots of balloons here still pushing through. The warden getting targeted. That's going to hurt him a lot here. Lots of HP taken away from every single balloon. That cuts their HP in about half. And it takes away the damage of the warden as well. That might give this a chance to defend. I think this multi might stop him. Does he go north? Okay, he goes He goes to the multi, but it's pinging him down fast. No warden. No multi inferno takedown. That single Inferno sniping off the Warden was the deciding factor of this attack here, and it's gonna be a defense. This is what Carnage needed to have a chance in this war to make a comeback because they're playing down on percentage right now, and now they have an opportunity to get ahead on stars. We'll have to see how the percentage lands here ultimately, but I mean, we'll see. <laughs> All right. What do you guys think of uh, my makeshift Halloween costume here for the stream? <laughs> Pretty awesome, right? Pretty awesome. 97% will be the final here. Still really high percentage, even though it's a miss. Electric Owl will make it 97. Oh, I thought he'd get the pad. Not quite. 97. Pass into Carnage. We're back. We just had to change hats. 
Ah, uh, okay, okay. Need headphones back on. So these are the important things, guys. These are the important things that we really, really concentrate on during the finals. Because they're very, very critical to the overall outcome and the morale of the teams. We gotta make sure that we uh, cheer them on correctly here. There we go. Take my glasses. Get these blue light blocking glasses. They're pretty. Oh, there goes the hat. <laughs> okay. Back to. Back to this. We're good. We're good. We're golden again. Let's go. D's. Coming in from Carnage. If they triple here, they take the lead. Got a lot of damage onto that single in front of the middle of the base there, but doesn't take it out. He had the lightning. But the battle builder is going to build it back up. What did he use the lighting on? I assume it was on the queen up top. I see the quake uh, imprint on the ground there. So the queen was taken out by the lightning. That formed the funnel for the heroes to come in on the left side. They got that multi down, which is a big deal. And he'll lalo through the town hall with the slammer coming in at the bottom to go after the scattershot here. That, uh, enemy Roar Champion's a little bit of a problem. It's locked onto the Hounds right now, and the Scattershot will transfer over to the Slammer as he pushes his way through the Town Hall. Has the percentage activation of the Town Hall, as he clearly was within that range. He's still got a couple of Freezes and, uh, Lightning and Poison and Haste and whatever else kind of spells he thinks he needs to push his way through the back side of the base here. So... Honestly, looking really, really strong here. Triple Ice Golem came out of the CC, so he doesn't really need the poison. He dropped it on him anyways. But now there's a couple air skillies chasing him around. The Dragon Rider splits off to the single Inferno. A whole bunch of red air bombs go to the minions up on top. And they save the balloons. <laughs> He's got it. Carnage Gaming takes the lead going into the final set of attacks, guys. And somebody mentioned that there's a... Maybe a mix-up in my score calculation for this so I'm not even sure if uh, Carnage can make the playoffs with the information that they gave me so honestly I'll have to verify that but right now Carnage Gaming is going to lead here and if the information that we originally got is correct then Carnage has a chance to make playoffs if they triple the next attack Castro is live and yeah we just did uh, verify that uh Hogger Metal is actually ahead of uh, Carnage Gaming in their overall rankings. I thought that they might be able to pass them up here. But this is still playing for a significant amount of prize money here as they continue to work their way through. So I, uh, sorry if I clickbaited you there a little bit. <laughs> uh, but one way or another, we still got a nice war going on here as QSFN continues to push their way towards the Town Hall. A lot of incoming fire here from all these expos, but if he gets the warden down, that releases a lot of the damage. A partial CC pull. There's a couple of headhunters come out. Looks like they switch over to the healers there for a moment. They're inside of the invisibility, so the queen won't turn on them. Now she turns. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. He's all right. That that worked. That worked. It was a little bit sloppy, but he got it through. And he will push his king into the bottom of the base here. The king actually not going to get access to any. Of uh, the major defenses, but he can provide some tanking to seek this royal champion through. If he gets the enemy royal champion to jump the wall and engage the king, then he can clear the way for the royal champion to go all the way through. But he's not going to do that. He's going to use the stone slammer and he's going to hold on to his royal champion and see if he can find somewhere else to put her in. I don't see the most opportune spot for her to go in right now, but the king is able to pop his ability. He is able to get that enemy royal champion to jump the wall and he is able to take her down. He's got. Oh, wait. Hold on. What was I thinking? I thought this was a Lalo for a second. This is a hog attack. <laughs> uh, the Roar Champion is obviously then going with the hogs. The Ward ability protecting them as they fight through the enemy king and take those first round of eagle strikes there. The queen getting her healers targeted by the multi inferno in the middle of the base. If they triple here, then they might force Carnage to have to triple if they still want to win. Because the percentage is uh, pretty heavily into QSFN's favor right now. But he'll freeze up as he makes a final approach here to this last scatter shot. His king is still alive. The queen's still alive. No healers, albeit. But he's still looking pretty solid. He has a queen ability. He's got plenty of time. Archers and sneaky goblins coming on the backside to go pick off some of these collectors. The warden's still working with the king. The king's going to go in there and get the scatter shot down. The electric owl helping out as well. I think he's got it. The king turns north, 
everybody will regroup here on the arch tower and everybody will go beat down the last wall there's a giant bomb that's going to take out the king triggers the torture trap up ahead and now the electric owl with the warden will continue on they'll beat through the wall here but with 15 seconds left and the queen ability still intact he'll pop the freeze pop the queen ability and qsfn has put themselves to two stars above carnage gaming and a percentage advantage so they'll force carnage to triple to win viking is live he was able to triple in the round before we'll see if he can do it again queen charge dragon riders to close out the war ladies and gentlemen this is the win or nothing this is worth about a thousand dollars in the difference in prize money for the attack here if i remember the exact prize breakdown so this is a pretty significant difference here that viking can do here even though they can't make the playoffs we'll see qsfn play in the playoffs one way or another but we'll see if carnage can work his way through and get his way into the town hall with this queen charge work his way all the way across here pretty clean path they're taking advantage of that little channel the king comes in on the other side of the channel and clears that top compartment got a cc pull with the king they will break off over to the queen but they're going to engage the queen at a very inopportune time he makes the queen invisible does he pull the hound away he does not. Sometimes it's dangerous to pull the hound away there when the queen is invisible. But the healers take a str- The archer chipping away at the healers? The healers took an eagle? What? Oh no! He pops the queen, but she's not going to get the town hall down! Okay, he's in trouble. He's in trouble! Ladies and gentlemen! The Queen's healers take an eagle strike while an archer tower was chipping away at them and they all go down and the Queen charge falls short before taking the town hall down. He still has a blimp. We need to fix our hat, apparently. <laughs> and he's got the dragon riders moving through. The world champion working with him. The blimp will sail through. He has the ward ability. He can use the ward ability to protect the dragon riders and the world champion as they go through the scatter shop, but also protecting that blimp on its way to the town hall. Needs something to split off to the multi inferno in the middle of the base here. He still might have a chance here to finish off this base. Needs to raise that town hall. Does. Okay. Does he freeze it as well? Okay. Needs to get that single up there. Dragon Rider is on it. Guess it! The single goes down! The queen <laughs> did not. She wasn't needed! He can still go all the way! Come on! All the way through! RC is still alive. She's barely alive, but she's dishing out damage, working on the air skillies. Warden and Dragon Riders are still pushing. Needs to get back to the CC in the middle of the base here, though. Come on, come on. Keep moving, keep moving. Time, time. Time is the biggest factor here, guys. He's not going to make it through. The Warden very likely could finish it off here, given enough time, but he's not going to have that time, and it is going to be a miss, and that means QSFN takes the win 13-13, to -13, takes it on percentage, and they win the grand finals of the third open qualifier, and you'll see them. In the playoffs all right guys there is our final bracket for the third open qualifier even though it's labeled as the first open qualifier the graphics messed up don't worry about that qsfn will moving on to the grand finals as will space station gaming qsfn and ny amazing so if you guys are new here make sure to like button subscribe to the channel for more clash of clans esports and then join us back in the next one there still will be four more teams that need to get qualified to the last chance qualifier so we'll see who they are Here's our final score breakdown with 27 points, QSFN dominating and uh, taking the whole thing there. Really brilliant work there. You see our runners up here, NGT, Carnage Gaming, Axio, and our Defending World Champions, Alter Attack, sitting at 12 points. So that's where we're going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy. We'll see you in the next one.